All right, 2.16 the time. Thanks uh, for being along. We appreciate it. Dr. Robert Jeffress is the pastor of First Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas. You see him on Fox quite a bit. You see him on national television. Uh, Dr. Jeffress, if I'm not mistaken, you've even been on CNN, haven't you? Well, I did until I became a contributor for Fox. I right. even did uh, Bill Maher's show real time. But, you know, Bill, uh, Bill, yeah, and I, Fox. Bill and I have been friends for years. We don't agree on anything. Um, he's a great guy. He is. A he really guy. is. He's very kind to me. I used to be his warm up uh, for his college uh, stand ups uh, when he really? had the show Politically <laughs> Incorrect, and and we do that show a couple times a month, and we just had a great time hanging out together. We just didn't bring up politics or religion or yeah. anything else. He just. Yeah. Uh, I, I've got to ask you though. It's it's no secret, and I think we're seeing it more and more and more. Um, Democrats are looking for yet another strategy. Uh, you, uh, you were on this, um, I think it was Juan Williams, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, and he, uh, you know, was trying to point out, trying to drive a wedge, if you will. And I'm using that to try and inform people that are listening. He said, uh, you know what, uh, look, uh, Jeffress is correct on the sex scandals, um, and the lies surrounding them. But they shouldn't flip our assessment of an entire party platform. But neither should a general allegiance to a party blind us to the failings of our politicians. And, of course, he was talking about, uh, you know, the porn star. Such things used to matter to Republicans and evangelicals. Well, they still do. They're just being used by Democrats uh, to try and shame, as you said, evangelicals into thinking they're being hypocrites if they vote for somebody that can, uh, you know, they can spend uh, what they bring in, they can do good legislation. I don't know about his, his spiritual life. I, you know, I would hope it's a good one, but that's not what I'm looking to him for. If you were advising evangelical voters, what would you say to them, Dr. Jeffers? Well, let's cut, let's cut through the malarkey here and remind ourselves that in 2016, we had a binary choice between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. And even though Democrats want to now try to paint her as St. Hillary of Chappaqua, <laughs> she was hardly a bastion of morality herself. I mean, look, Democrats claim to be pro-women against sexual assault of women and, and harassment of women, and yet they support a woman who shamed the victims of her husband's sexual assaults? I mean, isn't that hypocritical? Now, I'm going to be more charitable and Christian than the Democrats. I don't believe Democrats who voted for Hillary Clinton were supporting the abuse of women. Uh, I think they were supporting Hillary's policies, not her personal behavior. Why can't they extend the same courtesy to us and say, okay, I understand you're supporting uh, Donald Trump's policies? That's what this is about. And again, I remind our listeners, Rick, there are no perfect presidents. There are no perfect pastors or talk show hosts. We are all flawed individuals. And because of that, when we're electing a candidate, we have to do so by their policies. And and that's the bottom line. That's why as soon as I saw this article yesterday and I thought about it and I put it down and and reflected on it uh, more and more and more as I do, I, I became alarmed. It was like, I've got to get the message out. This is the new strategy for the Democratic Party. Shame evangelicals uh, into feeling like hypocrites for voting for Trump. That's not the issue at all. The stakes are too high for our nation to get this wrong. I mean, I think evangelicals that I'm speaking to can be proud of the vote that they cast for President Trump. I mean, what he has done in this one year of time has been phenomenal. He has put more federal judges on the court, twice as many as Obama. All of them are conservative judges. They are going to have a legacy of conservatism for 30 or 40 years to come. He has been pro-Israel. He's been the most pro-life president we've had. I've had people who have served in the Reagan and the Bush administrations. They said we've never seen a president as faith-friendly as President Trump, and that's why I continue to support him. Uh, Final question, Dr. Jefferson. Again, I thank you for coming on with Shut uh, such short notice. Uh, when you are approached, and you have to be, um, as a man of much consequence um, when it comes to theology and God and the Bible and so on, uh, you have to be approached uh, by detractors saying, uh, where do you draw the line between your religion, your theology, your beliefs, and politics? Don't you think you're blurring the lines? I hear that, so you must. <laughs> 
look, uh, our faith, a person's faith, is supposed to impact every part of his life. God never meant for our faith just to be reserved for one hour on Sunday mornings. It affects our work, it affects our relationships, and it ought to affect the political choices that we make. And uh, that's that's the Christian faith. It's not a Sunday-only, one-hour-a-week belief system. If our faith doesn't inform our politics, what is going to inform our politics? Uh, good, good point. I uh, Final question, I lied. Uh, Maybe a word on the passing of Billy Graham. Yes, you know, interestingly, uh, Rick Billy was a member of our church, First Baptist Dallas, for 54 years. He joined in 1953. He was a member of our church until he joined a smaller church closer to his home a few years ago. So we were honored to know him. I had the opportunity to achieve, uh, to attend his uh, funeral service a couple of weeks ago. He did more to share the message of Christ with the world than anyone since the Apostle Paul. So we're going to miss him. Dr. Robert Jeffress, uh, he's the pastor of First Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas. It's always a pleasure, sir, to talk with you, and uh, thank you for your time. Thanks so much for having me, Rick. All right. Well, uh, we're going to step aside here in just a little bit. Uh, That's the new strategy. You know, the Russia collusion is over, all right? And really, what did we find? What did we find in this year-long taxpayer expense uh, looking for ghosts under the bed. What, what, what did we find? Was there a Russian collusion with Trump campaign? No, not one shred of evidence. You know, it's sort of like I, I, I get the feeling, and it's nothing against city workers, but uh, I hate those moving or whatever they're called, road crews, you know, where they have the arrows. Uh, there's usually two or three of them. And instead of, instead of staggering out where traffic can, you know, kind of, Okay, well, I got to get over. They're right together. Well, what good does that do? Um, Anyway, you pass them, there's like three guys leaning on shovels. Well, there's your tax dollar at work for you. Um, How much money did they spend on this Russia investigation? Not one shred of evidence about collusion other than Clinton. Clinton buying dirt to use on Trump. And she still lost, so it's kind of a moot point. Um, and, of course, you've got Maxine Waters uh, screaming at the top of her lungs, well, never accept it. Well, we, I didn't expect you to. You know, I, uh, Democrats coming out of the woodwork, well, there's got to be something there. I, you know what? There isn't. Move on. If you can't, then sit there in your own little pity pool and do whatever it is you're going to do. But the the Russia investigation is over. No collusion, not one shred of evidence about collusion was found other than the Clinton campaign trying to buy dirt from the Russians to use on Trump. And you know what? Nobody's even surprised about that. Oh, oh, yeah, that's what Clinton does. Nobody's even surprised about that. All right. But the new strategy, if you believe in God... If you're, if you consider yourself an evangelical, have you noticed how the left-leaning media is trying to paint that word evangelical as something less than normal? You're not normal. You're different. You believe in God. You believe in Jesus. You believe, well, the Holy Spirit. Well, you got to be crazy. Have you have you seen that? It's a whole direction. It's a strategy. And if you really believe, didn't didn't God say, thou shalt not commit adultery, didn't it? Well, what about Trump? I I don't know. If he did it, he did it. He's not my pastor. He's not my spiritual advisor. Uh, You know, in times of trouble, you know, I don't pray to Trump. I pray to my God. I seek counsel from people that deal with that day in and day out. When it comes to not spending more than you take in, uh, when it comes to uh, defense, when it comes to infrastructure, when it comes to taxes, when it comes to national employment, security, sovereignty, uh, that's what I look for the president for. Yes, but what if he had sex with a porn star? Well, hopefully it didn't take too long so you get back to work. <laughs> 